Today is Father's Day, the 16th of June, 2024. And yesterday I posted to Facebook this challenge to try to interpret this poem by Robert Frost titled Dust of Snow. And so today I'd like to sort of walk through what my intention was in um, presenting this challenge. It is an opportunity to understand how people's thinking has been shaped to see the obvious as something other than what it is and the beauty the beauty of writing especially poetry is that true messengers who are trying to get through to people who are blocked by the conditioning of this public school system are very masterful in layering their works in ways that multiple meanings can be gathered from the things that they write. And that's when they decide that it's ready, that it's finished. Um, You can't really critique another person's creative work um, because it's their work, but the uh, creator can critique themselves in ensuring that the message that they intended is what people are getting by simply sharing it and asking them what they think. Um, The way that I usually start this process though, is that any words that I am not familiar with I look up the definition of and even if there are cross or multiple definitions to a word, you'll have what you need if you know your intent in going into trying to interpret any particular message. And that's important for you to know because our adversaries know that based on how the English language, for example, is structured, that they can twist even single words into multiple meanings. Um, A word like mine, for example, could mean um, this belongs to me, but it also could mean an area that you go into to um, scavenge for and look for content or jewels and so on and so forth. So we're going to look up at the word hemlock. This is from Wikipedia. And what I want you to notice is that there is a British English interpretation and an American English interpretation. And just ask yourself why that is. One is hemlock and the other is poison hemlock, which is significant because if someone is giving you hemlock in the way that um, the interpreters of the English literature page did of Robert Frost's poem, then um, you would need to know whether or not you were receiving natural hemlock or poison hemlock because one or the other could make you very sick. But you can see that in nature, hemlock is a hardy plant. It can grow almost anywhere, but it has a native range of Australia, Western Asia, and both North and South America. So those are the places where the ecosystem will support its continuous growth and um, seasonal production of whatever nutrients um, they have in them for human health and for animal health. The other thing that I want you to look at is then how they teach people to view this particular plant. Now keep it, if it's natural, it's not going to kill you. And if it is taken correctly, it's not going to make you sick. Anytime a, um, a part of nature is not to be consumed by humans, it'll either smell bad look bad or taste bad and so if if the, any of those things apply people naturally are not going to want to eat it but of course you know people who want to um, subjugate other people to make them sick to put them on a 70 year lifespan calculated life uh, and, and then age them in whatever uh, measure they choose to are good at trying to um, cover a bad taste, a bad odor, or a bad appearance through recipes. And, you know, that's where some of us who are gifted in the kitchen come in because we can make anything taste good if that's the only thing we have to eat. But what they have said here is that it's intoxicating um, and that it can be fatal for human adults and that it's more poisonous at some times of the year than others, which would indicate that there is a cycle of contamination. And there's probably also a hybridization, which means they mix it or they try to raise it or breed it with something else, something other than what it's supposed to be a a synthetic version of something in order to produce a result that is toxic. So going back to the poem, when I look at it, 
you know, what I see is someone who's getting high and they are getting high through something that's given to them in a powdered form. And it's a, a person who is suffering because when they get high, they feel better, even if it's just for a day. Um, because my life is not what it needs to be. And another interpretation for me is just the toxic um, dusting and plume clouds that they have used for centuries. Um, that's It's not new that they do this. And if you look at areas that have been deserted, meaning that um, the land has been made completely barren where it's difficult for anything to grow, if there are people who are living there, then there has to be water somewhere. Um, but the people there are very dusty and dry. Their skin is dry. Um, their hair is dry. And sometimes they literally appear to have been dusted. So, um, I want you to sort of reflect on that. And, um, and then I want to mention something about the memes that I posted on wives. But before I do that, I want to, um, share with you some video I took this morning to help you see clearly things that you may not have been looking at in this way before. Today is Sunday, June 16th, 2024, Father's Day. And I am at my um, former neighbor's house, um, who I quite frankly believe his home was stolen from him. But anyway, um, they've done a lot of renovations in preparation of either selling or renting it. And I thought this was a good opportunity to educate you on how the rain network or the real estate network and um, parts of the Department of Defense, like the uh, Army uh, Corps of Engineers work together um, to keep people, you know, contained and contently subjugated so the first thing is this pipe here which is hidden by the bushes and just the fact that these are all metal now I know that the thinking is that you know metal fixtures um, are more durable and longer lasting but you I've talked many times about the fact that structures shouldn't be built to last more than 25 to 30 years because kids want something different and what you build should be eco-friendly so that it can be easily broken down and then, you know, a different structure build or a whole different um, co uh, community or a village could be built um, or just gradually one by one, just alterations made. But anyway, um, this is the gas meter. Okay, and just keep in mind that people have not always had um, gas in their homes, um, but the meters now are remote control this is a this is a really old meter most of the meters these days um, when they're installed they're all digital so that they can be controlled remotely and of course this is how you can have your home connected to a municipal system and have it cut off and not in the um, service not be cut off for the entire city the same is true for apartment buildings how you know you can have one person who has utilities cut off in their unit but all of the other units are not affected because it's all uh, segregated for that purpose. But you see these old pipes and things like that, you know, they, you know, you have gas piped into your home. Um, and of course the municipal water supply that is controlled from a central location. And you look at how all of this kinds of stuff is installed. These are cable lines. And, you know, of course, most people do not install their own cable lines. There's a, you know, someone from the cable company who comes out to install the lines and any other kinds of services that you have. Right. And, um, you know, you see here how all the cable is run. Some of it, you know, my former neighbor may have run or the people who lived here before him may have run them. But ultimately, the initial installation is done by some professional professionally contracted well not contracted it used to be that you work for the utility company but now they you know with this whole entrepreneur getting people you know distracted with making their own money um a lot of people now they instead of hiring them they will contract with them so it's like rent to own labor so um i just wanted to give you an opportunity to, to look at things differently because you know you don't think that they are doing anything that's going to hurt you or harm your family because you know why would you but 
that's exactly how the system worked and how it's organized even for homeowners so don't assume just because somebody owns their home that they are also being controlled and that they are also are not being subjected to toxic um, contaminants inside of their own home they are doing over there um i will say that i can tell that the driver who dropped off this new um demolition container for the people who are working on the house over there is for me and can you also tell how i can tell that the driver is for me it is because he is backing up and has turned off the backup sensor so and he's he, he's backed up quite a few times and he it's off so I don't hear the annoying beep which would be really irritating especially with me trying to get chili acclimated still but you know I'm trying to get chili acclimated and they're over there banging on stuff so I have to assume that whoever's over there is not for me and you can see that they are throwing bricks from the roof into this uh, demolition container as if there is no other method to be able to do that. Um, this is a Hispanic family um, and this is clearly noise pollution. I don't know what to say about the fact that this is a Hispanic family who is out here doing this and, and think that it's okay. I'm gonna, I'll be right back.